Look, I think investors are reacting to a bit of a revenue miss, but your first gap profit reported ever. Talk to us a little bit about the discipline here and what kind of choices you had to make to make this happen in this macro environment. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're very excited about this. It's a seminal moment for Uber to deliver gap operating uh, profit a uh, free cash flow of over a billion dollars just in the quarter, along with a really strong, strong top line. You look at a gross bookings growth that was 33.6 billion dollars, uh, up 18 percent on a constant currency basis. So I think the results, both in terms of the top line and the bottom line, have been second to none and certainly leading in our industry. Uh, and it has taken a lot of cost discipline in terms of really looking at making that perfect match between a rider and a driver or an eater and a courier and a restaurant and making sure everything uh, in that transaction happens perfectly, no errors, no mistakes, no cancellations, et cetera. And at the same time, uh, it takes a lot of cost discipline in terms of overheads. Uh, our headcount has been flat. And if you look at our headcount compared to 2019, uh, pre-pandemic, our total cap count is up 10% during those years, and our gross bookings in the core business has been up 80% versus headcount growth of 10%. So uh, it absolutely has taken that discipline, but at the same time, the company continues to innovate and gain category position, which is what it's all about. Now, you formally announced that CFO Nelson Chai will be leaving the company, which Bloomberg reported a few weeks ago. What is the interim plan and, and what are you looking for? Will this be an internal hire, an external hire? Yeah, so uh, Nelson is going to be staying with us really through the balance of the year uh, up until uh, early January to make sure that we have a smooth succession plan. Uh, the next CFO is in seat and can be coached by Nelson uh, as well. And really what I'm looking for is another partner like Nelson. You know, Nelson came in at a very difficult time uh, and teamed up with myself and the rest of the team, taking us through an environment of deep operating losses, taking us through the IPO, getting us a really strong balance sheet so that we could come out of uh, the IPO and could deal with issues like the pandemic to where we are now, which is a leading company. The next five years of our journey are about scaling and becoming that true global uh, platform that can grow top line in a 20% range, can continue to innovate and continue to drive the kinds of margins and the incremental margin growth that we've been driving historically. Uh, we told investors that incremental margins as a percentage of gross bookings growth will be seven plus percent. And consistently we've come in above that because we've been innovating, but at the same time been disciplined at the bottom line. I'm looking for a partner who can deliver kind of the next chapter of our growth, just like Nelson did Uber 2.0, so to speak. So let's talk about the executive suite, uh, the broader executive suite in that next chapter. Your CTO left back in 2021, was not replaced. How are you thinking about that role? Is there anyone particular in mind? We actually, uh, our tech team is led by three different leaders. Uh, Sanjeev Jain, who's our uh, chief product officer, really thinking about the rider app, driver app, eater app, uh, et cetera. Gus Fogner, who's thinking about the core services, uh, customer service, safety, insurance, uh, et cetera. And then Albert Greenberg, who runs the infrastructure. You know, we are at a core, a technology company. And instead of having one tech leader, we have three tech leaders. Uh, and, that, and that team has come together to drive outsize innovation. When you look at driver upfront fares, when you look at our Uber Teens product, when you look at taxi, hailables, low cost, our entry into new, new verticals, there's no company in the industry that's innovating at our speed or scale. And it's thanks, thanks to the tech leaders that we have in house at this point. To our global radio and television audience, you're listening to our conversation with Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi following that earnings print. You know, Dara, a look at the quarter gone. Number of trips, gross bookings, active drivers, demand and supply side, all at records, strong gross booking forecasts. Why wasn't that enough to kind of raise expectations for adjusted EBITDA next year? You'd said in February, I believe, it'd be around 5 billion. 
Well, I'm not a stock analyst. I can focus on running the company. Uh, and we guided for Q3 adjusted EBITDA well above street estimates. We got it for $975 million to $1.25 billion, uh, which was a substantial increase versus expectations out there. And consistently, if you look at our track record, we put out targets. We've consistently beaten those targets, you know, by anywhere five, ten plus percent, and we intend to beat that five billion uh, dollar target just as we've beaten every single target that we put uh, in front of our investor. So we think continued discipline, uh, execution, strong top line growth, increased margins, and more of the same, along with innovation, is going to get us well beyond the five billion dollars. The innovation piece is really interesting. I liked Emily's question about the tech leadership. Em's been all around San Francisco in a cruise. I've been all around San Francisco in a Waymo. And I appreciate for our audience around the world, jumping in a robo taxi with no driver is not yet a reality. But for lots of people that I asked on Fred's Twitter, LinkedIn, that's their question for you, Dara. When is Uber going to take that fleet of autonomous vehicles as more of a priority? Well, we are very uh, bullish on autonomous. It's taking time. We have to make sure that the technology is safe. And we're partnering amongst all of the significant verticals that we have. One of the unique aspects of Uber is not only are we global, not only are we the largest platform uh, with the biggest audience, 137 million consumers coming to us every single month, but we operate and every significant vertical for autonomous passenger vehicles with Uber, delivery food and grocery deliver, delivery with Eats, and then freight as well. Autonomous trucks are absolutely going to be uh, uh, a big part of our future. And if you look at each one of those verticals, we're partnering with leading companies, uh, Waymo, for example, in passenger vehicles, uh, Neuro and and Serve, uh, amongst others, in delivery, and then in trucking, of course, Aurora, with which uh, we have a strategic investment as well. So we absolutely believe that autonomous is, is going to be a part of our, of the future, and we are working to uh, expose our leading marketplace to autonomous technology as it develops in a safe, efficient manner. Well, speaking of another kind of technology, artificial intelligence, Instacart's now out with a chat bot, DoorDash as well. Is there an Uber bot in the works? Uh, there's definitely going to be an Uber bot in, in, the, in the works. But, but I tell you that we have been working with machine learnings, artificial intelligence, uh, systems, deep learning systems for years and years and years. Every time you get matched up, with a car or get matched up with a courier. Uh, there are ML algorithms that are making that match. The pricing that happens, time and day uh, and distance, all of that is uh, is driven by machine learning algorithms. So that has been going on and those algorithms only get better and the data sets that we work with are the largest data sets globally. Uh, and the more data we have, the smarter we get, the more personal uh, we can get. We are now focused more on productivity applications. So for example, introducing uh, GitHub Copilot for our developers or helping summarize situations for our customer service agents so that they already know context of what's going on with a particular customer and how they can help. Uh, we will absolutely put our AI agents out there to help the consumer, but also don't forget about the driver. Drivers who are driving on uh, our marketplace, they also want, want help. Where should I go? What ride should I accept, et cetera? So we're also working on AI to power drivers and couriers so that they can make smarter decisions every day to be able to earn flexibly, but to maximize their earnings based on their time. So hang on, just to double down there, is an Uber chatbot something that you're working on right now? Uh, we're working on it right now, absolutely. But it's a very, very small part of the AI ecosystem at Uber. Our global radio and television audience is listening to Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi. Dara, Uber is as close as anything the US and Europe has to an everything app, something akin to what you might see in Southeast Asia. So I, I'm curious how closely you're paying attention to your crosstown neighbor, Mr. Musk, and what X is doing with an everything app. 
Uh, well, uh, it's difficult to take your eyes off of what Musk is doing or read about uh, what Elon is doing. And, and we do so because we want to learn and, and listen, it's pretty fun. Um, but we are leading in terms of building out a super app. Uh, remember, too, that in Southeast Asia, we have a very significant strategic investment in Grab. Uh, Grab has, uh, has mobility, delivery, payments on their app. Uh, Kareem, uh, which, in which we have a big investment in Middle East, same thing, mobility, delivery, payments, and stuff, uh, payments as well. So we're very, very familiar. Uh, with a super app concept. And in the West, I do think Uber is the closest to achieving that super app. We want to be that operating system for your everyday life. Wherever you're going, whatever you want to get delivered, Uber is going to be there for you. And I think that we are steadily moving along the super uh, app path, which is why we're gaining category position against our competitors, both in mobility and delivery, while delivering margins and being profitable as well. Curious if freight is part of that super app plan, Dara. I mean, even you pointed out today that you know that is the weakness in the business. It does seem to be a drag on the business. What's the plan there? To sell it? To spin it off? Well, the plan is to build at this point. So freight is absolutely suffering from the same kinds of trends that you see in terms of uh, uh, delivery of things and retail generally is a bit weaker than spend on services. You saw Yellow, for example, big trucking firm go out of business uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, there's a lot of difficulty in terms of freight, in terms of freight rates, and freight is fighting its way through that. But we continue to innovate. Even today, uh, the way that shippers connect to truckers is incredibly outmoded. There's a lot of paper. There isn't much data. The pricing, the, the routing, et cetera, um, is based on technology that was built 20, 25 years ago. As we continue to innovate and as we continue to focus on algorithmic pricing, making that perfect match between a shipper and a trucker, we think over a period of time we can build an asset of great value. So at this point, it's heads down. The team is executing in a tough environment. Our losses are decreasing. We think the second half on a bottom line basis is going to be significantly better than the first half. And next year, we're going to get back to growth.